He also knows deep in his heart that Donald Trump couldn't find Ukraine on a map if you had the letter U and a picture of an actual physical crane <laughs> next to it. He knows that this is, you know, an, an administration defined by ignorance of the world. And so that's partly him playing to their base and playing to their audience, uh, you know, the, the, the credulous boomer rube demo that backs Donald Trump. Donald Trump's a smart one in there. Oh, y'all, y'all, y'all elitists are them. <laughs> <laughs> you, you elitist with your geography and your maps and your spelling, even though my your math and your reading. <laughs> yeah, you're reading. Yeah, well, that illiterate Rube secured better trade deals from Mexico and China. He oversaw the lowest unemployment ever seen in the United States. He brought back full-time manufacturing jobs that the supreme elite said couldn't be done. He remade the courts. He's reduced illegal immigration. Hell, he's turned Mexico into the wall. He's rebuilt the military, and he's provided Ukraine with game-changing weaponry that will ensure that Russia cannot advance any further. Welcome back, everyone. Before we get to it, I wanted to take a quick moment just to let you all know about the new Bolo shirts over at the Teespring store. I was constantly being asked to bring those shirts back, so I did. Head on over to my Teespring store to check out that and other designs. If you want to support this channel, you can do so on Patreon, Subscribestar, or just send a donation over PayPal. With YouTube making it impossible to make money, it's only thanks to my subscribers that I'm able to keep doing this. Today's clip is one of those teachable moments you hear so much about. If you want to know how the Democrat Party media sees all of you and the rest of the country? Feast your eyes on this sh Donald Trump couldn't find Ukraine on a map if you had the letter U and a picture of an actual physical crane <laughs> next to it. He knows that this is, you know, an, an administration defined by ignorance of the world. And so that's partly him playing to their base and playing to their audience, uh, you know, the, the, the credulous boomer rube demo that backs Donald Trump um, that, that wants to think that... <laughs> That, that Donald Trump's a smart one in there. Oh, y'all, y'all, y'all elitists are them. <laughs> you, you elitists with your geography and your maps and your spelling. What is it with these people and a complete lack of self-awareness? As they're moaning and whining about what was said to this NPR reporter, they take it upon themselves to not only attack half the country as subhuman, but they also start using a kind of Southern accent to imply that's how dumb people talk. Just wow. I mean, imagine that they were mocking people as dumb, but using like a thuggish rapper accent instead, or an Asian accent. Clearly, that would be considered bigoted. But surprise, surprise, they give themselves a special pass. So if you don't know what this is all about, they're outraged about an incident between Mike Pompeo and an NPR reporter. Pompeo claims that she lied to him twice, saying that she would keep the interview off the record, but then she ended up publishing it anyway. During the interview, Pompeo got into an argument with her and claimed that she couldn't find Ukraine on a map. His implication being that none of these so-called journalists actually care about Ukraine, they only care about how they can hurt Trump with it. We know that for a fact because it was never a scandal that Barack Obama refused to arm Ukraine. But the media elites are framing this as literally an issue about finding Ukraine on a map. As far as NPR goes, they're just as untrustworthy as the rest. Sure, they speak softly and they play smooth jazz bumpers, but their content is mostly far left and the reporting is typically biased in favor of Democrats. I tried to find any articles about Ukraine and Obama from this NPR reporter, Mary Louise Kelly, but I couldn't find find anything. She's been with NPR since 2004, so I should have been able to find something. I mean, she's the national security correspondent for <laughs> fake. But no, it appears that her interest in Ukraine started with Trump. Funny, she couldn't find anything to criticize Obama about in regards to Ukraine. I found these same kind of partisan blinders from other reporters at NPR. Camilla Domanoske actually did an article about overcrowded detention centers during the Obama administration but never mentions the Obama administration. I actually reached out to this reporter on Twitter to find out why she neglected to mention Obama, and her answer was very telling. I responded that it was his policy in his detention centers, but she never responded back. So this is a tactic that they use to disassociate Democrats or Obama from negative news happening in the government. They simply report it as the government. That's how they can now say Obama was scandal free. Oh, my you're path and you're reading. Yeah, you're reading. <laughs> You know, your geography, knowing other countries, sipping your latte. All those lines on the map. Uh, <laughs> but, 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 oh, my God. But, but, but you know what? But, 
<laughs> it was Rick's fault. I blame Rick. Oh but, you know, but, but in all honesty, but all, you, blame you know what Rick. NPR should Why do? Why not? Sorry, hold on. You, wait, wait. Can yeah, I tell give you me what, a second. Yeah. Hold on, hold on, hold on. Sorry. <laughs> that was good. Sorry. So professional. So journalisming. If you're not familiar, Rick Wilson is a Republican strategist and a long time never Trumper. They just bring him on to attack his own side, which is standard operating procedure in the DNC media. Have you ever seen a Democrat in the media whose job it is to attack their own side? I'm guessing he's still feeling really triggered from getting destroyed by Steve Cortez Saturday on MSNBC. Rick con continues with these insanely insulting terms. And by the way, I will tell you this, I wear your scorn as a badge of honor. I really do. And, and this kind of condescension from unlikable elites is one of the reasons we won in 2016 and a reason we're going to win again. Last time I was on, the last time I was on TV with you, you called Trump voters toothless rubes. For you to continue to use all of these terms of derision only reinforces the need, unfortunately in this country, the need that we had for the electoral revolt of the America First movement. And yes, we needed somebody to lead that movement who was a fighter, and he is at times indelicate and brash, okay? But, and he can at times be Wait, offensive. Hold on. But he has also produced results for this country like we have never seen before in only three short years. Hey, if Trump were really as deeply unpopular as these Democrat Party elites pretending to be journalists say he is, then why have they given up any sense of credibility in order to destroy him? Why attempt to have him removed from office just before an election? For completely bogus reasons. Why constantly attack and demonize his supporters as rubes and monsters in an attempt to pull support away from Trump? Trump. The answer should be obvious to all of you at this point, because they're politically partisan liars and hypocrites. They lecture on and on about love, not hate, while they pretend to be overcome with laughter and portray half the country as slack-jawed subhumans. That's about all the Don Lamont I can take for one day. Thanks for watching. Keep coming back.